Hi everyone, welcome to video 6 of the 2.4 series. In this lesson you'll be learning about aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, and the difference in energy requirements between different cell types. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the purpose of cellular respiration in words and equations, describe where and how aerobic and anaerobic respiration happens in terms of glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain, emphasize the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration, and compare the number and structure of mitochondria in specialized cells. Cellular respiration is the process of turning glucose into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Before you learn about the two types of cellular respiration, you must first understand why ATP is so important for plant and animal cells. So what is ATP and why do cells need it? Well, ATP is the energy molecule or the energy currency of cells. It stores chemical energy needed to fuel cellular reactions. It's incredibly important for maintaining cell functions, growth, repair, and reproduction. Without ATP, cells can't do anything. They can't survive. ATP is made through the process of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration occurs in both plant and animal cells. It'll continue to occur, this process, as long as the cell is alive. And this means that even if you're asleep, your cells are still active and working constantly to make ATP, to keep your cells functioning. So there are two types of respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is very efficient. It can produce a high number of ATP molecules per one glucose molecule. Whereas anaerobic respiration doesn't require oxygen, but it's only about 5% as efficient as aerobic respiration. It means it produces a low number of ATP molecules per that one glucose molecule used. On top of that, there are three steps known as three chemical pathways in the process of respiration. These are glycolysis in the cytoplasm, where glucose is broken down into two pyruvate molecules, there's this Krebs cycle in the mitochondria, where it uses those two pyruvate molecules to produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide, which is a byproduct. And there's this electron transport chain, also in the mitochondria, where hydrogen is used up to make 38 ATP molecules. Aerobic respiration uses all of these three chemical pathways of respiration. But anaerobic respiration only uses the first pathway, glycolysis. This is because both the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain require oxygen. So here's a recap of the structure of the mitochondria. A mitochondria's outer membrane is smooth and continuous and it flows nicely like this. This membrane acts as a selective barrier which is responsible for transporting materials in and out of this organelle. The inner membrane, this red or orange maroon thing here, is highly folded into structures called crustae. This membrane is the site of the electron transport chain. And this electron transport chain is so important because it makes the majority of ATP molecules during respiration. That's why the presence of crystae increases the surface area so that the electron transport chain can maximize ATP production. So let's start off with anaerobic respiration, which is usually used for fight or flight. So anaerobic respiration occurs in the absence of oxygen in the cytoplasm of an animal or plant cell. You do not need oxygen for this. Anaerobic respiration only uses glycolysis, so there's fewer reactions in total that need to occur. The reactions can also happen anywhere within the cytoplasm, so there aren't actually many limitations on the speed of, that, this reaction, that this reaction can occur. This makes anaerobic respiration a very fast way to produce ATP. But anaerobic respiration only produces two ATP molecules per one glucose it uses up, making it a very inefficient way to produce ATP. Anaerobic respiration also produces lactic acid as a byproduct, and when lactic acid builds up, it lowers the pH of a cell. And this can really affect the structure and function of enzymes that are needed for cells to function properly. Remember, pH affects enzyme shape and structure. Additionally, lactic acid is a really big molecule and it can't be easily removed from a cell. It has to be broken down into smaller bits. So lactic acid can build up and it causes muscle cramps during exercise. 
So there are a lot of downsides to anaerobic respirations and cells only use this type of respiration when they can't get enough oxygen or when they need ATP super quickly. So for each molecule of glucose, anaerobic respiration produces two ATP molecules and lactic acid. This is the equation you need to know. This diagram of glycolysis is massively simplified. So basically during glycolysis, a glucose six carbon molecule, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, is broken down into two pyruvate molecules that are three carbons each, one, two, three. During this process, two ATPs are produced and two NADH molecules are produced. The NADH molecules are important for carrying hydrogen ions. So what happens to these pyruvate molecules? In the presence of oxygen, the pyruvate molecules enter the mitochondria to be further metabolized in the Krebs cycle. So this goes down the aerobic respiration pathway. But in the absence of oxygen, the pyruvate is converted to lactic acid in the cytoplasm. And this is part of the anaerobic respiration pathway. Now let's talk about aerobic respiration, which is the type of respiration we use for endurance ac activities. When cells have access to oxygen, they will usually use all the three chemical pathways to produce ATP. The two chemical pathways that require oxygen are the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain, and they both occur within the mitochondria. This means that the mitochondria is the only site of aerobic respiration. It's not the site for anaerobic respiration. During aerobic respiration, glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water, which are both byproducts, and ATP, which is the main product you want. For each molecule of glucose, aerobic respiration can produce 38 ATP molecules. So use the following equation to represent anaerobic respiration here. You must know this. As long as the cells are able to get sufficient supply of oxygen, they will be able to produce ATP through aerobic respiration. You must know the general steps that occur during aerobic respiration and how it's different to anaerobic respiration. As I covered already, you already know that glucose is converted to two pyruvate molecules during glycolysis. Here are the two pyruvate molecules. These two pyruvate molecules enter the mitochondrion matrix and undergo the Krebs cycle. So the matrix is inside the Christi, okay? The Krebs cycle is a series of enzyme-controlled reactions that uses these two pyruvate molecules to produce a small number of ATP molecules, so a tiny number of ATP. They also produce carbon dioxide as a byproduct. But the main product that comes out of this Krebs cycle is this NADH and FADH2 molecules, energy-carrying molecules that transfer energy. They pretty much carry hydrogen with them. These energy-carrying molecules, the NADH and FADH2, then go to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is a series of enzyme-controlled reactions that happen across the inner mitochondrial membrane, which is this bit highlighted in red. Basically, during the electron transport chain, the NADH and the FADH um, molecules that carry hydrogen create a huge accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, which is this bit here between the outer and the inner membrane. This huge hydrogen ion gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane drives an, a an enzyme called ATP synthase to produce 38 ATP molecules. So here's a diagram, another t so here's another representation of the electron transport chain. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane, this is the intermembrane space, and this is the mitochondrial matrix. The Krebs cycle happens in here in the mitochondrial matrix. And the main product of Krebs, the Krebs cycle is this NADH or the FADH2 molecules that carry hydrogen ions. The electron transport chain causes the accumulation of hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space. And this huge concentration gradient of hydrogen ions drives this ATP synthase, which produces ATP. So let's go over that again. Aerobic respiration uses glucose and oxygen to produce a lot of ATP and carbon dioxide and water as a byproduct. Whereas anaerobic respiration just uses glucose, doesn't need oxygen, to make a little bit of ATP and lactic acid. So different types of cells have different energy requirements. 
The amount of energy required by different types of cells is strongly correlated to the number of mitochondria those cells contain. So for example, the mitochondria within cells such as muscles that have high energy requirements have more mitochondria and they also have more cristae to make room for the electron transport chain. This increases the surface area of the inner mitochondrial membrane which allows for a greater production of ATP. Whereas some cells that don't need as much energy, they won't have as many mitochondria and they won't have as many cristae folds because they don't need to increase the surface area. So some cellular processes that require energy are really obvious to us, like muscles that help us move because they need ATP to be able to contract and relax, right? But there are also other processes which require a lot of ATP which might not be as obvious, like metabolizing nutrients in the liver, building proteins, transporting molecules across cell membranes, breaking down wastes and toxins, and growth and replication. There was actually a previous exam question about these different cell types and the amount of mitochondria they have. So let's take the heart muscle cell, for example. Heart muscle cells have extremely high numbers of mitochondria, about 5,000 plus. This is because heart muscle cells are always working really hard to pump blood around the body to keep the, ox to keep the animal alive. To achieve this, the heart muscle cells contain many thousands of mitochondria to produce enough ATP to do these contractions. And compare that to the red blood cell, which have zero mitochondria. The red blood cells are actually the animal cells with the fewest mitochondria. In fact, these cells have no mitochondria at all. So red blood cells, their function is to transport oxygen around the body. But because oxygen is really small, it's uncharged, it can diffuse into and out of the cells passively. It doesn't need ATP for cell transport. So well done, you've reached the end of the video, and I'll see you in the next one.